this is not getting discussed on the mainstream media. Not only are they wrong legally, but the fact that they would do this is outrageous. This is an overreaction and really nonsense. How would you react if this was your son or your daughter? It's the offense of knowing the truth. It's the offense of having an alternate world view. Saying God bless you to someone is not a violation of the law. Welcome to Jay Secchio Live. I welcome our TV cameras into the studio. As you heard, the White House and State Department have both released statements. Now think about this, folks. Go back to when we first started talking about Pastor Yusef Nader Khani, which was August and September. And uh, we worked on getting statements from government leaders, Congress, 89 members of Congress calling on the government and the State Department to speak out, and the Secretary of State. The State Department had released some comments, but it took until December for Secretary of State Clinton to do so. She did in a speech, and the State Department released other statements leading up to that. The White House did it in October, but it took about a month for the White House to speak out as well. Now, I just want you to put it in context. On Monday, we tell you that we have got the report that his life is in imminent and immediate danger. On Tuesday, we release everything after confirming as much as we can that we believe that the execution order has been issued. On Thursday, the White House and State Department both release statements uh, condemning Iran and calling again for Pastor Yusef Nader Khani's release. Let me just read you some of the White House statement. This came from the Office of the Press Secretary, and I want to applaud uh, the White House, President Obama's team, uh, Jay Carney, and the State Department there, uh, Secretary of State Clinton, the Office of uh, Religious Freedom there, and Ambassador Johnson Cook as well, a good friend of ours. Uh, Here's uh, some from the White House. The U.S. condemns in the strongest possible terms reports that Iranian authorities reaffirmed, familiar, because we were talking about it earlier this week, that death sentence for Iranian pastor Yusef Nader Khani for the sole reason of his refusal to recant his Christian faith. The State Department, very similar message, Mr. Nader Khani facing a death sentence on charges of apostasy, leaving Islam, and has refused to recant his Christian faith. Government persecution for simply following one's faith is common in Iran, where followers of many religious tra- uh, traditions face harsh treatment. The world is speaking out. Governments yep. are speaking out. The EU dad is speaking yes. out. Germany has spoken out. It's all good news. Yeah, the European Union has said through their high representative of the Foreign Affairs Ministry for the Council of Europe and the European Union, the high representative has in several instances expressed her serious concerns over the increase in executions in Iran and calls on Iran to free the Iranian pastor Yusuf Nardakani and other Iranians sentenced to death for offenses which, according to international standards, should never result in capital punishment. The high representative is therefore extremely worried about the reports that the execution of Iranian pastor Yusuf Nardakani in the Golan province may be imminent. Germany also said the same exact thing through their top human rights official. He said, release Nardakani, lift his death sentence. Folks, we're getting, as we said yesterday, the goal here is to get global support. We're doing just that. A lot of media, this is media advocacy to keep Pastor Yusuf Nardakani alive and get him out of this jail. And Jordan, thousands are joining with us, over 100,000 to stand with Pastor Nardakani. That's right. And I asked you today, uh, as again, we go into what is the weekend in Iran, Friday and Saturday in, the, in the t- a time we need to all take a stand for Pastor Yusuf. Call now, 877-989-2255. The world is listening. 877-989-2255. Those Iranian leaders just heard from the White House. Or go to ACLJ.org. It is a matter of life or death. Pastor Yusuf Nadakarni has been illegally detained in Iran for nearly two and a half years. Under Sharia law, he's now facing a death sentence because of his Christian faith and his refusal to embrace Islam. The ACLJ has launched a global effort to save the life of Pastor Yusuf, working in this country and abroad to secure his freedom. Now, efforts are at a critical stage. A resolution has been introduced in the U.S. House of Representatives condemning Iran for violating human and religious rights and calling on Iran to release Pastor Youssef immediately. Stand with the ACLJ. Sign our petition urging members of Congress to add their names to this important resolution. It's time to turn up the pressure on Iran. Demand the immediate release of Pastor Youssef now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255 or online aclj.org. 
Hey, welcome back to the broadcast, everyone. We've heard from the White House. We've heard from the Secretary of State. We've heard from the European Union. We've heard from Germany. Our office in Strasbourg, France, is working on France and Italy as well on behalf of Yusef Nardacani. And let me tell you some very strong statements, and I want to say a thank you to the White House. And uh, this isn't political, folks. This is just reality. A very strong statement coming out of the White House. A very strong statement coming out of the State Department. Bob Beckel on Fox. He's the uh, more liberal member of the, that five. By, he's a Democratic consultant. Listen to what he said, number 13. If in this country we were to prosecute and, and put somebody to death who converted from Christianity to Islam, it would, we would have an uproar here. The idea, you, the Iranians do enough bad things in this world. The idea to pick on Christians like this, the Muslim world has got to rise up and say we have a right to be Christians no matter where we are, and you've got to stop this stuff. I, I, listen, folks, some of you are calling in and are saying, oh, why, you know, you're being so kind to the president. The fact of the matter is, this is not a, this is a bipartisan issue, folks. This is beyond political politics. The White House did make a very bold and direct statement. So did the Secretary of State. Uh, Jordan's going to explain in a moment why it's coming through their different branches within the executive re re realm. There's a reason for that. But let me tell you what we need you to do. First, we have now reached, and this is very important for you to understand, we've had 2, over 2,500 of you sign up for the Tweet for Yousef campaign, which means right now we're reaching each day 666,633 Twitter accounts, which is an increase, by the way, of 50% over the last week with the Tweet for Yousef. 192 total countries and territories reached, 166 of the 193 UN member nations are being reached, and 26 territories are being reached, including the Palestinian Authority. We've had some very famous people um, retweet this. Donald Trump retweeted this. Um, we've had actresses re retweet this. This is huge. So, Jordan, let's first walk everybody. Before we explain the political side of this, let's go ahead and explain people the tweet for Yousef campaign. Then I'm going to ask people to either sign the petitions, which are now going around the globe, or, uh, or to go to ACLJ.org. But first, let's explain the tweet for Yousef campaign so everybody understands. Absolutely. Go to ACLJ.org. There's a graphic, a picture of Pastor Youssef right on the homepage, on the right side of the homepage at ACLJ.org. It says tweet for Youssef. You just click on that. You sign up. Every day a tweet automatically goes out. So, of course, yesterday's automatic tweet. And then there it's again, uh, Pat Patricia Heaton from Everybody Loves Raymond. She is part of the Tweet for Youssef uh, campaign and, and many other people who are reaching thousands of people. Some big pastors have signed up, and I thank all of them uh, for doing so. And it's an automatic tweet. You don't have to think about it, that we uh, write each day with the latest news. It's very easy. You go to aclj.org, and I will tell you, in just a matter of moments, you can reach, even if you have you know, five people following you on Twitter or you haven't signed up to Twitter yet, uh, it's worth it because it all starts building and building. You may reach one missionary that you are friends with and close to in one part of the world who sees it, they sign up, and people following them. And, and we know that's how it works on Twitter. Yep. So it doesn't matter if you don't have 10,000 or 2,000 or, or five people following you on Twitter. Use the tool, and it's being reported all over the world. That I had the largest, uh, and they were in our studios. If people want to see it, we can, we'll post it to aclj.org. Uh, yesterday, the largest uh, TV network in Brazil and the fourth largest network in the entire world and part of that story was talking about our Twitter campaign. I mean, it is it is reaching uh, the world, and I hope people understand it's it's uh, it's easy, it's free, and uh, you don't have to think about it. It goes out each day, one, just once right. a day from your account. CNN International is covering it. Fox News International is covering it. Uh, Trinity Broadcasting Network, the Daystar Network, all of the networks we're on. All over the globe, this information is going out. So you go to ACLJ.org. You can sign up for the Twitter campaign. We encourage you to do it. Now, you can also sign a petition that we're now sending around the world. We've exceeded 100,000 signatures. Our goal is now 200,000 signatures, demanding the release of Pastor Youssef Nardarkhani according to international law. Here is the number. It's either ACLJ.org or you call right now, folks. This is a life and death matter, and we are engaged in media advocacy. 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255 or ACLJ.org. This is big, folks. We're getting this is part of legal advocacy. We're utilizing the media to keep the man alive and to get him released. This is media advocacy. So again, aclj.org or 1-877-989-2255. Jordan, let's go right to the phones. Yeah, Kayleen calling from Colorado on line one. Kayleen, welcome to JSECU Live. Hi, Kayleen. Hello. Yes. Uh, why are we uh, as Christians uh, apologizing for being Christians? 
<laughs> well, I, I, listen, we're not. And I want to be very clear here. Not only are we not apologizing for being Christians, let me read to you what the White House actually said in their statement. And Jordan, I want you to comment on this because some people are saying, why are you being so kind to the White House? The United States, this is coming from the Office of the Press Secretary for the White House. The United States condemns in the strongest possible terms reports that Iranian authorities reaffirmed a death sentence for Iranian pastor Yusef Nardakani for the sole reason of his refusal to recant his Christian faith. I'm going to have that up on the screen for our television audience. That's what they're saying, Jordan. It could not be more direct than that. And when the White House does something like that, we need to say thanks. It helps get the global message out. Absolutely. You can understand uh, the, the president uh, necessarily getting involved in a dialogue with the supreme leader of Iran and then uh, Pastor Youssef becoming a bargaining chip in the global geopolitical sense of what's happening with the nuclear program is not necessarily the best uh, situation to go to first. Let me tell you something. The Iranians know and the regime knows that the media has been following this story. They waited they hope that, you know, tweet for Yousef, all that. We weren't able to generate this much international media attention so quickly, and they were wrong again. And let me tell you something else. If they didn't know Monday and Tuesday, uh, yesterday, when the most powerful office in the world releases a statement about you sentencing, about you carrying out the execution of a pastor, the Iranian government is on notice again all the way to the top, the Ayatollah, President Ahmadinejad, and the State Department did it as well. It is great news, and we should not be, I don't think, pushing right now. That You have to understand that they have information, we have information, and they're doing everything they can that they think is in his best interest of Pastor Nader Khani, and I applaud them for that and doing so very quickly. You know, this yep. didn't take within two months. This 48 took hours. two days. ACLJ.org for you to sign on to this global petition where you can really make a difference. ACLJ.org or call us at one 877 989 Two two five five. That's eight seven seven nine eight nine two two five five. Jordan, let's try to grab one call quickly before the break here. Yeah, Mike is calling from Montana online for Mike. Welcome to JSECO Live. Hi, Mike. Hi. Uh, quick question: sure. um, If uh, the pastor is released, will he be able to even return to his country or his ministry? Well, the question will be whether we've had situations like this before where we've had to actually take the person out of, in this particular case, it was the Gaza Strip, and move them to another secured location. So it's going to depend on the political circumstances. It'll depend on the relief. I will tell you this. This pastor wants to minister, Jordan, we know that, to the community there in Iran. He does not want to leave or else he could have, he had three options to leave already. He's refused to recant his faith. Uh, he refused three times to recant his faith three separate days. That was back in September. And then... Uh, it got even more extreme. The government uh, there get made an offer saying, well, you don't have to renounce your Christian faith, but will you acknowledge Muhammad is a prophet sent by God? And he refused to do that. I mean, this is biblical persecution uh, in a form that you don't usually get to see so publicly. I mean, we know Christians are persecuted around the world, but it's not usually something where you're able to actually see right. these accounts and the same accounts we learned about in the Bible. I just need to tell everybody right now, the White House is speaking out, the State Department is speaking out, members of Congress are speaking out, the world is speaking out. Are you speaking out? Call now, 877-989-2255, and stand for Pastor Youssef Nader Khani. We go into the weekend in Iran, and this is a critical time, 877-989-2255. Again, the White House and State Department reaffirming our belief that an execution order has been issued against Pastor Youssef Nader Khani, 877-989-2255, facing a hangman's noose just because of his Christian faith, 877-989-2255, or go to aclj.org right now. It is a matter of life or death. Pastor Youssef Nadakarni has been illegally detained in Iran for nearly two and a half years. Under Sharia law, he's now facing a death sentence because of his Christian faith and his refusal to embrace Islam. The ACLJ has launched a global effort to save the life of Pastor Youssef, working in this country and abroad to secure his freedom. Now, efforts are at a critical stage. A resolution has been introduced in the U.S. House of Representatives condemning Iran for violating human and religious rights and calling on Iran 
to release Pastor Youssef immediately. Stand with the ACLJ. Sign our petition urging members of Congress to add their names to this important resolution. It's time to turn up the pressure on Iran. Demand the immediate release of Pastor Youssef now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255 or online aclj.org. Welcome back to the broadcast, everyone. Part of what we're doing for Pastor Youssef Nardakani is a form of advocacy that I call media advocacy. That is, we are advocating for our client's life, utilizing the media in the United States and around the globe. Here's a piece that Jordan just did with Fox News. Let's talk for a moment about the situation. It's a very, very uh, sobering and scary situation for this pastor. Uh, what's the latest at this point, knowing that this sentence has been uh, placed upon him and that he is awaiting, uh, you know, the death sentence at this point. Sure, you know, today he's been in jail 866 days only because of his Christian faith. His wife was in jail for a year. His Muslim human rights attorney in Iran is facing nine years in jail and being barred from ever practicing or teaching law again. So it's been a serious case throughout. He's had that death sentence hanging over, over him for more almost two years itself. And now the appeals process is kind of done. It went to the Ayatollah. And the latest news we got, we have a unique relationship with the ACLJ. We have offices around the world. We work with the Iranian legal team on the ground here. Be, that's very rare that you ever get to follow something like this in Iran so closely. Last time this happened, where you could track it, 1990. And it was a pastor then. And what we have seen and what we re reported on Monday, just like when we first started talking about it here on Fox News, who's done a great job covering this story for everybody, because the, the key is the attorneys came to us and they said, we have got to spread the message to the world. This is the second time they've kind of uh, warned the, the signals and said, okay, tell everybody again. And that's because they believe, and these are experts, that on Monday when they gave us a phone call, that his life was now increasingly in danger in the execution every day. And that's because they do believe an execution order has been issued. Now in Iran, that's not public. In fact, in 1990, when you go back to the pastor who was executed, they got the execution order when they got the body. Wow. Uh, the White House has released a statement condemning the action. Uh, but do you think the U.S. is going to have to step in in a more, you know, forward way, in a way that's really going to send Iran a clear message that it's very serious about the situation? You know, it's interesting because September, October, when we first started talking about it again, it took about a month for the State Department to engage. The White House engaged in October. Secretary Clinton then in December taking it very seriously, and that's because it's Iran and it's very careful relationship right now with the U.S., I understand that. Here, this week, we announced this on Monday. Tuesday, we announced the execution order, and by Thursday, we have the White House, most powerful office in the world. And here's what's key. Uh, we don't want to make this about the U.S. government versus Iran. That will not help Pastor Nader Khani. But what does help is these statements and the world speaking out and the media speaking out because I'll break this here. Some people may have seen it, but it's in Iranian news. They have uh, Pr Press TV, which is funded by the Iranian government, has offices here in Washington, D.C. And they announced Friday, there's the front story of their homepage, this is not true. And they did this in October. And they said he's really not on trial for uh, apostasy. He's on trial for other crimes really? and that's a good sign at least that we know that because of the White House and everyone has spoken out in the media that they are being watched and we know from precedent past precedent that's why the attorneys know this is important just because an execution order may have been issued it doesn't mean it's over in fact Iran will do this he's already been in jail 865 days they could do it for another two years so they're backtracking they're, they are backtracking and what I hope we see here is at least a confirmation very soon probably after the, the holidays are over there, the weekend, their end day starts on Sunday, we can confirm he's alive again, taken together with that press report. They know they're watched, but here's what we have to be careful about. We may have stalled it again. That's what we hope and pray, and everybody's been working on it around the world. But we have to be prepared. If they, if they, haven't, uh, if they do move forward, they don't release him, because it's not really a victory until they release him. Uh, that they will test the waters. They have a history of doing this for up to about five years. And if the world doesn't speak out, one of those times we, we call you and say, hey, this may happen, uh, because they try to get the media to say this is never really going to happen, uh, that's when they carry out the executions. But if you keep speaking out and you're ready to every time, this regime listens. Obviously, you see their response 24 hours after the White House statement, and they've now, it looks like, delayed the execution. That's good news. Well, let's hope so. That is good news. And so the pressure has to stay on uh, Absolutely. in this situation. And, and the great part about this also is that uh, Eric Cantor, the House Majority Leader, uh, announced to us last night that the resolution, which is bipartisan in, in uh, the House of Representatives, 
is going to be likely voted on Wednesday this week. And a great thing about that is that the sponsor, it's Congressman Joe Pitts, a Republican. The other sponsor is uh, the first Muslim congressman in U.S. history, Keith Ellison. So that's the world coming together. And I think we just have to keep up hope. If there's no, if we, until we know it's over, right. you have to assume he's alive and we keep fighting. Well, we wish him all the best. Uh, thank you very much for that update. And we'll be checking back with you, of course, about the situation as it develops. Thank you. I and mean, thank it. you for Fox News for covering this so heavily. Okay. We've got a lot of calls coming in. You saw we're hitting Fox News, Jordan's done TV in Brazil. Uh, we've been in reports from the Jerusalem Post to the papers in Germany and France, literally around the globe. We've got more questions. Let's go right back to them. A lot of calls coming in. I want to go to uh, Susan calling California. Uh, what would she do if, uh, if she had the opportunity as a diplomat to speak to the Iranian uh, government officials? And there are countries around the world, let me say, uh, to sue Germany, who's called in their ambassador, Brazil, uh, who, again, has diplomatic relations with Iran and business relationships, who are doing this. And, Susan, uh, welcome to JSEC Yo Live. You're on the air. Hi, Susan. Yes, thank you. Sure. Yes, if I were a diplomat, I would say to, the, to Iran that, look, the eyes of the world are now on you, and you can affirm something which you did sign, which ACLJ has brought up. They did sign the U.N. Um, Human Rights Agreement that affirms people's freedom of religion. That's right. They've signed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and they even have in their own legal system uh, proclamations of religious liberty. Jordan, you've studied this. Uh, they have, they've signed all of the documents that allow for religious freedom. But what they're doing right now is trying to thumb their nose at the world. What they did not expect, what, and Susan, this is what I'm calling it, media advocacy that we would be doing globally. I mean, we've got our television cameras in here. We've got, we're on radio. We're getting this out. As I told you earlier, we are reaching 666,000 Twitter accounts every day on behalf of this pastor. We're in 166 of the 193 UN member nations, that's 86%, and 26% of the territories, including the Palestinian Authority. So people are responding. The response actually is fantastic. As I said, over 100, almost 120,000 signatures online. But again, I'm going to ask that same question, Jordan, and you've been asking it too. You, you, we may be deploying you this weekend around the globe, and if to do that, we need as many people as we can to be with us. These petitions, which are now broader than the House resolution, we're going to let the world know how many people are standing with Pastor Yusuf. That's right. As, uh, and let me add, uh, the congressmen that have added, we're up to 28 total now. Uh, uh, Spencer Baucus, uh, Thaddeus McCotter, Thad McCotter, as people know, Doug Lamborn, uh, Wally Herger, and uh, Michelle Bachman has added officially. I knew she would. She's been very out front. She's tweeted out from her own right. account with 100,000 followers the Tweet for USF program. She's added now to the House resolution. I will tell you, Dad, the world, you know, we've got offices in Russia. We work, uh, again, around the world uh, in countries that have diplomatic relationships, good diplomatic relationships right. with Iran, and are even defending Iran's you know nuclear power program. They could be the countries that go to Iran, even privately, and say, listen, we're trying to defend you from what could be a pending war, uh, and now you do this. This is not making life any easier for anyone who's even trying to defend any of your positions. And let me tell you, you're, you're tr we're trying to save a life. This is not about Israel. This is not about America. This is just about, as uh, it was said on Fox News, you don't allow people to execute anyone because their religious faith. One of uh, a good friend of ours, Ed Harris, says Afar is going to be on, on my show later. He's a spokesman for the Amani Muslim community, which is a persecuted uh, Muslim community. He said in the same CNN article that I was uh, quoted in uh, yesterday as well, he said these types of cases, especially around apostasy, are two frequent occurrences in the Muslim world. And as a Muslim, I'm appalled to do this in the name of Islam. I know that isn't Islam. It's a violation of human rights and even a violation of Islam itself. And a violation of Article 18 of the International Covenant yep. on Civil and Political Rights, which Iran is a signatory which guarantees the freedom of belief. So you've got, we've got a Muslim that's going to be on the Jordan's program today that's speaking out on this issue. Listen to what Bob Beckel said. This is number 15. It's exactly what he said, but there are moderate Muslims that are speaking out, and I'll take a listen. The thugs who are, are, the, are in the Muslim community who are the terrorists scare the heck out of moderate Muslims who will not stand up and speak out. This has got to end. I think it's starting to end. By the way, you know why Keith Ellison, Democrat, member of the United States Congress, a Muslim, signed as a co-sponsor with Joe Pitts, the Republican, to free Pastor Youssef. So did Jim McGovern, a Democrat. Heath Shuler, Democrat. Jim Moran, Democrat. John Conyers, Democrat. Jim McDermott, Democrat. Along with a number of Republicans as well. Huge bipartisan support. But folks, as we've been saying, 
You have no excuse here. The world is speaking out. Congress is speaking out. The White House is speaking out. The European Union is speaking out. We're working on other countries right now. Will you speak out? Become part of that Tweet for Youssef campaign at ACLJ.org. Sign on to that petition at ACLJ.org or call us at 877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. This is really a question of life and death. Back to the phones we go. Let's try to get a few more, Jordan. Chris calling in from California online for Chris. Welcome to JSEC Yo Live. Hi, Chris. Hi. Um, I'm 12, and I just wanted to say that I'm praying for Pastor Youssef. Thank you very much. And I will tell you this, um, 12 years old calling in and praying, that is something that uh, is the critical element here, folks. We've been asking people to pray. You know, Jordan, you need to put this in a very personal context. This man's been in jail for a long time. 865 days. His wife is, was in jail for a year. His attorney, who is Muslim, uh, is facing a nine-year prison sentence. Uh, he's got two young boys. Uh, the, the reports are he's 32, 34 years old. So young, you know, young guy. And uh, no access to the world, no access to, the, to Scripture for 865 days, refuses to renounce his faith, has been given multiple opportunities to walk out of jail free as a free man and return with his family if he just renounced his Christian faith. He refused to do so even though he knows in Iran. In 1990, they executed a pastor exactly this way. And why now is Amnesty International and the White House speaking out? They got the same information in 1990 we didn't have the same kind of media access then what happened he uh they believed they kind of disappeared you know went off the map in the courts right they believe the execution order happened and then they got a body with a list of why he got executed and that's exactly what the, that's how the regime we got does this it. week exactly so we just heard from chris 12 years old called with his parents permission saying he's praying for pastor yusuf we want to encourage you to pray for pastor yusuf but i want to encourage everybody that's listening to me right now this is the critical time. We're filming this on Friday for our television audience, for our radio audience. It's the last day of the weekend before the weekend, and it shuts down in, in Iran. We know that. This is the time for you to speak out. If you have not signed on to this petition at ACLJ.org, if you haven't become part of the Twitter team for Tweet for Yousef at ACLJ.org, you go to ACLJ.org right now. Now, everybody else that's listening to me, we're at 120,000 signatures. We may be sending Jordan this week around the globe as your ambassador, our ambassador, speaking out on these issues for this pastor. You go to your phones right now. If you've not yet signed on to this petition, here's the number. This is the moment. It is life and death. ACLJ.org. Sign that petition or tweet for you, at ACLJ.org, or simply call right now. This is a life and death case. 877-989-2255. That's one. 877 877-989-2255 or you can go to aclj.org the time to act is now 877-989-2255 It is a matter of life or death. Pastor Youssef Nadakarni has been illegally detained in Iran for nearly two and a half years. Under Sharia law, he's now facing a death sentence because of his Christian faith and his refusal to embrace Islam. The ACLJ has launched a global effort to save the life of Pastor Youssef, working in this country and abroad to secure his freedom. Now, efforts are at a critical stage. A resolution has been introduced in the U.S. House of Representatives condemning Iran for violating human and religious rights and calling on Iran to release Pastor Youssef immediately. Stand with the ACLJ. Sign our petition urging members of Congress to add their names to this important resolution. It's time to turn up the pressure on Iran. Demand the immediate release of Pastor Youssef now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255 or online, aclj.org. 